thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you, Julia, for that important land acknowledgement. And we really want to thank our partners at AC Hunter Libraries. We worked with a, a bunch of staff there, including Julia that we see tonight. But um, thanks for all your efforts and warm hospitality and hosting us online. Uh, so welcome to this session on the post-1925 history of Muslims in Newfoundland and Labrador. My name is Jennifer Selby, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Religious Studies and uh, project lead on the Muslim Narratives and Lives in Newfoundland and Labrador project. And I'm here with my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Aisha Ekinger, who's a um, postdoctoral fellow in the department as well. And we'd also like to just briefly do some shout outs to Colleen Quigley, who's the head archivist at Memorial University and a key partner in this project, and our amazing student team. Also our community partner, um, the Muslim Association of Newfoundland and Labrador. But a special shout out to our students, uh, Barbara Dos Santos, Benjamin Stanley, Nisaiba Udin. They've been gathering archival material uh, items for months now and editing videos, doing all kinds of work. And uh, especially Samaya Akhtar, who's doing all of our Instagram work uh, for the Islamic History Month. So thank you to all those uh, amazing students. All right, so I'm going to share uh, my screen, a little bit of background about what this presentation is about and how it came about. So back in 2007, uh, the Canadian House of Commons designated October as Canadian History, uh, Islamic History Month. And after that, several cities and organizations across Canada began celebrating it, including, uh, starting in 2019, the St. John's City Council unit unanimously passed a proclamation designating October as Islamic History and Heritage Month. So here Aisha and I are with um, Dr. Saeed Prasada, the president of the Muslim Association of Newfoundland and Labrador, and the mayor, Danny Breen. Uh, that was back in 2019. So in what follows, I'm just going to say, tell you a little bit about our project, a little overview of Muslims in Canada and in our province, and then Aisha will take over and tell you about our findings so far, focused on the 1960s and 1970s, with a few snippets into the building of the mosque. So we're aiming to talk for about 35 minutes and then have lots of time for comments or questions. Uh, so sit back and relax, and uh, we'll take you through this little tour of the early history of Muslims in Newfoundland and Labrador. All right, so our project, uh, the Muslim Narratives and Lives in Newfoundland and Labrador Community Project, launched in 2020. And as you've heard, it's a partnership between Memorial, um, including the Department of Religious Studies and the Archives and Special Collections with uh, the Muslim Association of Newfoundland and Labrador. We're really grateful. It's sponsored by a SHRC Partnership Engage grant. And the key components of the project are to basically create a physical and digital archive at the QE2 Library in St. John's. And we're doing that with three kind of things. Uh, first are our findings that we're, we're looking with our students for existing archival sources post-1925. So that's in newspaper, organizational records, and so on. Then we also have conducted 20 oral history narratives with uh, pioneers in the Newfoundland and Labrador Muslim communities. So you might have heard uh, Mona Altahan, a bit of her story on the radio this morning, and we'll be sharing a few other little snippets tonight. And also archival material donations uh, from our interviewees and other uh, Newfoundland and Labradorian Muslims uh, and organizations here in the province. So why are we doing this? Firstly, Actually, as an academic who works on Islam and Muslims in Canada, it's very clear to me that there's actually so little uh, available about the history of Canadian Muslims. And part of that is due to a paucity of archival materials and research. So uh, that's one of the important reasons. We really see this lack of historical data as contributing to um, sometimes uh, misinformation that Muslims are always necessarily newcomers to Canada and to our province. Also, Aisha and I are partners in a larger project called the Muslims in Canada Archive, based at University of Toronto. And we're really excited that our own MNL and NL project, that all of our archival materials are staying here in the province while we uh, work with that team. 
So who are Canadian Muslims? Uh, first, they're a growing population. So from 2001 to 2011, so every 10 years, we get Canadian census data about religion. Uh, we don't have the 2021 data yet, uh, but we know in this first 10 years that the population doubled from about half a million to a million, and it's expected now that the population is over 2 million. Canadian Muslims are much younger than other faith groups, so the average median age is 28. They're also um, very highly educated, so 44% have a university degree. And we also know compared to other faith groups, they're the most underemployed based on their education. 95% speak English or French, and they're the most ethnically and linguistically diverse religious group in Canada. So a couple of words about the history of Canadian Muslims. So the history of Canadian Muslims predates Canadian Federation in 1867. The first uh, officially recorded Muslims in Canada, you might have seen in the quiz, uh, were James and Agnes Love, a young Scottish couple who migrated to Ontario in 1851. And they were followed 20 years later by another couple of European origin, uh, the Simons, who migrated to Canada from the United States. And so together, these uh, families made up 13 people that were recorded in the first Canadian census of 1871 as, dot, 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 you also were asked this in the quiz, as uh, Mohammedans. So Afla Cooper, who our project invited to speak with us back in February, who's a professor from the Department of History at Dalhousie, she gave a talk which was called Imagining Black Muslim History in Newfoundland and Labrador. And so as part of that talk, one of the things that she said uh, was that the first Muslims to arrive in the Americas were Black and or African. And up to 30% of enslaved Africans who landed in the Americas over the course of the first four centuries of enslavement were Muslims, or at least, or at the very least, conversant with Islam. So she shared with us, I thought, a very, um, a really fascinating narrative of which we don't know that much. Um, and it's the story of W.H., so this was um, a black man's skull that was discovered in 1987 in Lansalou, Labrador. And she was suggesting that he was likely a Muslim. Um, so he was likely maybe one of the first Muslims to be in Newfoundland and Labrador. Unfortunately, and if there are any budding historians on the call, there's been very little research done into this. Um, this finding. Uh, there's one paper that was published in 1995 in the Canadian Journal of Archaeology, but clearly a lot more research uh, to be done on this topic. So here's just a photo of this uh, 1871 uh, census, just to give you, just to show you what it looks like. So this is the kind of materials that uh, archivists and historians look at to piece together this history. So following these early settlers from Europe, um, Muslims started to uh, settle in Canada from other parts of the world. By the end of the 19th century, arriving largely from Ottoman-ruled Syria, Lebanon, Albania, and Yugoslavia. And especially a key destination was Northern Alberta. And so this is also the home of the first Canadian mosque which was opened in 1938 in Edmonton, Alberta, and it's called the Al Rashid Mosque. So the mosque no longer looks like this. Um, it was moved to a kind of central um, historical site in Edmonton. Uh, subsequently, it's much larger now, but um, many commentators say that given that the contractor at that time was of Ukrainian origin, it might explain some of the architectural details. And this is a, a little snippet from uh, the Edmonton Journal from December 9th, 1938 that describes the opening of the mosque. It was a big event, about 250 members attending, as this article says. Actually, most of them were of Syrian origin. And the mayor of Hana and a really famous imam um, was there in attendance. So it was a big event. So now just a couple of words about Newfoundland Muslims. And here I'm going to leave it uh, and pass over to Aisha. Well, thank you so much, uh, Jennifer. Uh, and good evening, everyone. 
uh, as we say it in my native uh, language, which is Turkish, um, teşekkürler. Thank you for taking the time to join us as we celebrate the Canadian Islamic History Month. Um, I would like to begin by humbly and respectfully uh, thanking all Indigenous peoples for graciously hosting me and my family as uninvited guests in their ancestral lands. Uh, as Jennifer mentioned, in this part of our presentation, uh, I will share a brief overview of Muslims uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, I will begin with some demographic highlights, then I will continue with the stories of some Muslims who arrived in the province in the 1960s and 70s. So, uh, Jennifer, uh, are, can we share, continue sharing your sc screen uh, so that, yes, thank you so much. Um, so, I will begin uh, with some uh, demographic information, as I said, uh, uh, and uh, after that, uh, I will uh, share the stories of 13 individuals uh, who are known to be uh, the earliest Muslims to arrive in our province. Unfortunately, for the sake of time, we couldn't include all of them, nor those who came later on, uh, those who participated in our uh, project interviews. But the good news is, uh, in the next, uh, in the coming weeks and months, we plan to share uh, more content, more findings from our project. So I would request you to please keep in touch, uh, stay tuned for updates, uh, checking our uh, project website and Instagram account regularly. So, uh, who are Newfoundland Muslims? Uh, although we don't have uh, the latest official data, uh, we estimate uh, their numbers to be over 3,000 people. Uh, and uh, there is a steady growth, especially over the last 20 years. And as a Muslim who moved, who moved here uh, almost 20 years ago, I personally witnessed that steady growth over that period of time. And Muslims who live in this province are from diverse uh, ethno-cultural and linguistic backgrounds, including second and third generation of Canadians. And most of them are highly educated professionals uh, working in different sectors uh, across the province uh, as physicians, engineers, um, professors, university professors, public servants and entrepreneurs. Uh, and as you may also notice, there is also an increase in the number of Muslim international students who come to our province to study, and also an increase in the number of uh, Muslim refugees uh, seeking refuge in our uh, province. In 1982, uh, the early Muslims established the Muslim Association of Newfoundland and Labrador, which I will refer to from now on as Manal. And, and in 1990, they also opened the Masjid al Nur in St. John's as the very first mosque in this province. Um, before we begin our project, uh, the late Dr. Mohammed Irfan uh, was assumed to be the very first Muslim to settle down in this province. Uh, he came in Saint, to St. John's in 1964 to teach at Memorial University, Department of Physics. And for many years, uh, he served as the chairman of Radiation Control Committee. So when there were, whenever there was a risk of increased radiation in the water, the land or the sky, he was out there to do measurements and suggest solutions. So the first image you see here is from a 1969 issue of the Muse magazine, uh, and it highlights an interview which they conducted with Dr. Irfan and another uh, faculty, Muslim faculty member. And I personally enjoyed reading that piece because it gives a unique insight as to how back then uh, Islam uh, in particular and religion in general were uh, perceived and experienced by these two well-educated uh, Muslim scholars. Dr. Ifan was also known for his leadership uh, in the early Muslim community. Uh, he was among the founding fathers of Manal and Masjid al-Nur. Uh, as part of his community service, uh, interestingly, he also conducted several Islamic weddings. So many uh, happily married couples probably remember him uh, with gratitude. Uh, in this archival wedding photo, which was donated uh, to our project um, uh, from one of our participants, uh, he is featured uh, in the early 1990s. And later in his life, uh, we know that he moved out of the province to live uh, in mainland, uh, closer to his uh, uh, children, and passed away in 2008. After we started our research, however, 
uh, we discovered uh, and excitedly discovered uh, that Dr. Ifan was actually not the very first Muslim to arrive and work at Memorial University. It was preceded by Dr. Shafiq Alwi. Uh, we found out that Dr. Alwi worked as an assistant professor at the Department of Economics from 1961 to 1963. According to the archival records of the department, he had a passion for baseball. And I really like that quote, uh, which says uh, he used to cancel classes if they were in conflict with major baseball games for which he offered a TV set in his office. So this is really uh, quite uh, interesting. At the end of 1963, uh, he moved to Montreal to serve as the head of economics at Loyola College, uh, which was subsequently merged into Concordia University. Uh, and he worked there for many decades, uh, eventually retiring as Professor Emeritus. Uh, he's known as the author of many books, including some uh, on Islamic economics, banking, and financing. So in the second archival picture, you see him uh, on a 1972 uh, economics uh, symposium uh, together uh, with uh, Senator Alistair uh, Grozard. Uh, Dr. Alvi also volunteered for the Muslim Community of Quebec, a non-profit organization in various capacities. Another early Muslim we found about through our project is the late Dr. Daoud Hassan Hamdani. Uh, he's a well-known Canadian Muslim economist and statistician. Uh, he lived here in St. John's from 1964 to 1966. And uh, I want to share something that uh, I found out uh, also about him. Um, and interestingly, we also have uh, very older uh, versions of phone books in St. John's, uh, Newfoundland. So I was going through these phone books and I found out that when he was here, he lived actually on Forest Road. <laughs> I Googled map uh, in the Google map uh, to find out the very house that he uh, lived. So it was an interesting discovery. Um, he did his master's degree at Memorial University Department of Economics. Uh, and uh, looking at these two images, uh, you will see uh, uh, that he was actually very active and popular as a graduate student. Uh, so he was asked to write an article for the news uh, in 1964. And then uh, he was also highlighted, his biography and image were highlighted in another issue of, uh, of the news magazine. Uh, in 2021, uh, just recently, uh, Murray Hogman, another Canadian Muslim, published a book called Minarets on the Horizon, the Muslim Pioneers in Canada. Uh, Dr. Hamdani was one of the early Canadian Muslims he interviewed for this book. And I was so excited to read the section where he was recalling his time in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, he was quoting, he's quoted as saying, quote, uh, there were only two other Muslims there. So I believe uh, on the base of my research is that he was referring to the late Dr. Muhammad Irfan and his family uh, who seemed to be the only Muslims in the province back then. Uh, we have a copy of that book uh, by Murray Hogman and we will be delighted to uh, gift it uh, to the Newfoundland Public Library because I think uh, it contains very up-to-date and very interesting uh, information about uh, Canadian Muslims. And uh, the sections are uh, actually categorized ac according to provinces, uh, names, and so on. So it will be a great treat uh, for those who are interested to learn more. And Dr. Hamdani is best known for his statistical uh, analysis of Canadian Muslims. He was also a pioneer of research on the history of Muslims in Canada. And it was through his archival work on the 1871 census uh, that the Scottish Love family came to light as the first Canadian Muslims. Prior to that, uh, nobody had a clue uh, that uh, the first recorded Muslims were uh, dated back to then. And unfortunately, he passed away on uh, 24 November uh, 2019, shortly before we launched our MNL in NL project. Otherwise, we would love to reach out to him and uh, share, uh, learn about his experiences of being a Newfoundland Muslim. One of the early Muslims included in our project is uh, the late Dr. Mohamed Khalid. Uh, and I had the privilege to meet him and his wife, uh, the late Miss Ali Minissa Khalid. And they were an outstanding couple. 
uh, always graciously welcoming us, uh, me and my family, to their home. Uh, we had the pleasure of listening to their stories as we enjoyed some nicely brewed tea. Uh, Mrs. Sally was very, very uh, peculiar about uh, the quality of the tea that she would serve to her guests. So it was very nicely brewed tea, homemade uh, delicious cheesecake and poetry. And uh, Dr. Mohamed Halil, uh, let me briefly talk about him. Uh, he was a graduate, uh, 1967 graduate of the University of Minnesota, Department of Forestry. And before moving here in the early 1970s, he worked for a few years in Ontario as an assistant professor of forestry at Lakehead University. Uh, and he then joined the Canadian federal government as a forestry research scientist. And he dedicated his life to the study of our forests and published extensively. Uh, and also he was among the founding member of the Manal uh, and uh, Masjid del Nur. Uh, one thing that is uh, very interesting about him, as I indicated earlier, that he had a passion for poetry. He translated into English one of the works of world-known poet Muhammad Iqbal. And unfortunately, again, uh, he also passed away uh, in 2011, uh, 10 years ago, and laid to rest next to his late wife, Adamini Sahalin, at the Muslim section of the General Protestant Cemetery in St. John's. So in that second picture, picture you see uh, his gravestone, uh, and that picture was taken by our project team uh, during uh, one of their visits uh, to that Muslim section of the Protestant cemetery. Babs Kirim, uh, another well-known early Newfoundland and Labradorian Muslim, uh, has a background in nursing and hospital management, and she's a successful entrepreneur operating in the sector of home care, and in 1974, uh, she and her husband arrived in our province, uh, moving from England. Uh, and after spending 10 years in Musgrave Town, they settled down in St. John's. So they had a fair share of uh, how uh, rural Newfoundland life uh, is like. Um, according to the records of Muslim Association of Newfoundland and Labrador, the red carpets of the first uh, of the mosque, Masjid al Nur, were donated by her husband and father-in-law. Father and these red carpets uh, were used for many decades. Uh, I remember myself, I, uh, I prayed on them uh, whenever I visited the mosque, and they were recently uh, replaced um, uh, by more blue-colored carpets uh, during a renovation. Uh, now I would like to talk about Abdul Salam Misbah, uh, someone uh, who is very dear uh, to our community, a Muslim community, also to our family. Um, uh, he moved to Newfoundland and Labrador in 1974 after working four years in London, Ontario. Uh, he's a medical physicist and played a tremendous role in the care of cancer patients in our province. Uh, in 2003, he retired as a director um, of uh, medical physics and electronics at Dr. H. Bliss Murphy Cancer Center in St. John's. Uh, he's a well-respected community leader and he played key roles in the founding of Manal and the construction of Masjid al Nur. Uh, he also fostered intercultural relations through his volunteering at the Ethnocultural Association of Newfoundland and Labrador. I believe that association is no longer around, uh, but at that time, uh, intercultural relations were fostered through the agency of that organization, and he was an active volunteer over there. Uh, another interesting piece of information about him is that uh, he's also known as an outstanding neighbor. And one of his next door neighbors, we found out, uh, that uh, was he was uh, Dr. Hans Rollman, a honorary research professor of religious studies at Memorial University. So uh, during our interview with Ab uh, Abdul Salam Misba and his wife, Louise Misba, uh, they just happened to mention about uh, knowing him. And then uh, we found out that uh, uh, on October 14, Dr. Rolman dedicated his column in the telegram to his Muslim neighbor, Abdul Salam Misba. He wrote, quote, when our family arrived in this province 20 years ago, the first friendly Newfoundlander we met was neither a Bayman nor a Tawni, but a Sunni Muslim from Egypt.
Uh, now I would like to talk about another uh, important uh, early Muslim uh, in our province, uh, a very colorful character, uh, which I have the pleasure to meet in person. Uh, Mona Altehan uh, is an engineer and moved here in December 1974, uh, just before the new year. Uh, she was the first female student to start a master's program in engineering at Memorial University. In 1980, she received her master's degree by developing the first mathematical model in North America to predict iceberg movement. And her research uh, found the, uh, set the foundation for many other uh, scientific findings. Uh, and her pioneering works were highlighted in the March 2020 edition of the Atlantic Business Magazine. We know that in 1980, she became the first woman to ever work as an engineer for Levaland Franco Newfoundland. In 1988, she became the first woman engineer in Newfoundland and Labrador to launch her own engineering company. In the same year, she set up a Newfoundland chapter of Women in Science and Engineering, the WISE. She also helped develop technology that reduced friction on the Canada arm, uh, the robotic arm uh, on the International Space Station. So her pioneering work really reaches out, stretches from the marine uh, to the space. Uh, together with her husband, uh, Dr. Hussein al Tahan, she significantly contributed to her Muslim community. Um, Dr. Wasiullah, uh, another uh, early uh, settler uh, Muslim uh, in our province, uh, he moved uh, here in 1975. Uh, he's a hydrologist and has made great contributions to our province in the field of water resources management. Uh, he worked at the Department of Environment Lands and Lands and retired in 1997 as the Director of Water Resources. Uh, an interesting uh, finding about him is that he was the manager of a project that produced uh, our province's first water resources atlas in 1992. And that research, that publication, served the basis of future uh, research in the area of water resources management. He was also a prominent figure in the Muslim community, and during his interviews, uh, he explained to us how he worked hard to raise funds uh, here locally and across Canada and internationally uh, for the construction of Masjid al Nur. And to me, actually, he's probably the very first Newfoundland Muslim to start thinking archivally. And why I'm saying so is because uh, most of what we know about the history of Manal and the first mosque, Masjid al Nur, is from an archival document that he put together back in 1994. And that document uh, is accessible through Manal website. Um, uh, Dr. Dilshad Mitani uh, is a dentist, and when she moved here in 1976, uh, there was a shortage of dentists in the province, and she graciously filled this gap by practicing for 44 years. Um, and in 2016, she received the Customer Commitment Award from the town of Torbay, where she lived and worked for many decades. Uh, so in this picture, you see uh, her uh, with uh, the mayor and then uh, the MHA, uh, Kevin Parson, uh, and she's receiving the award from them. Dr. Mitani is also a well-known artist uh, whose paintings are displayed at the walls of the city hall in St. John's, uh, town of Turbe, town of Puchko, and the Masjid al Nur Mosque in St. John's. So uh, whenever you have a chance to visit our mosque, uh, when you enter from the entrance, uh, you look up to the left and you will see her painting over there, and, uh, which we really appreciate and enjoy uh, seeing each time we enter the mosque. Uh, now I would like to talk about Dr. Mohammed Nazir. Uh, he moved here in 1976 after completing a PhD in natural resources economics. Uh, he served as the director and then as the assistant deputy minister of forestry. Uh, in 2004, he retired as the Associate Deputy Minister of Energy in the Department of Natural Resources. Um, and during his service, uh, he led the introduction of a new Forestry Act, two wood supply analysis, and two provincial forestry plans. 
he also changed the forest management direction from wood production to an ecosystem based management philosophy. And for all this uh, pioneering work, uh, in, two, in 2000, year 2000, he has received the Canadian Forestry Achievement Award. So here in this image, you see uh, the article uh, from the Western Star, uh, 11 August 2000, um, uh, the news about his being, um, uh, his reward, his award. And he's also known uh, for his community volunteering, not only for Manal, but also for other faith communities. Uh, he's the director of Religious Social Action Coalition of Newfoundland and Labrador that works towards the elimination of poverty. And now I would like to talk about the last uh, er, uh, important uh, figure in our Muslim community, um, Dr. Aziz Urman. Uh, he's the last because uh, he came in 1976, so we put, uh, uh, you know, uh, all of our um, uh, highlights in a chronological order, but um, his contributions were amazing. So he was an electrical engineering professor and a world known innovator. Uh, he arrived in 1976, as I said, uh, to teach at Memorial's Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science. And um, in the uh, department's website, there was an interesting quote about him uh, to uh, characterize him. Uh, it says, he had a reputation among students for his white, colorful neckties that were fashionable in the 1970s, uh, but less so in more recent years. His students would organize Rahman tie days when everybody would wear the widest and most colorful tie they could find in their father's closet or the local Goodwill, uh, Goodwill store. Uh, Dr. Aziza Rahman has published 757 papers, 11 patents and two books, he has won numerous international professional awards, and he's also known as the father of the hybrid for inventing in the 1980s the interior permanent magnet motor generators that are used in Toyota hybrid electric vehicles. So again, uh, in the second picture, you see a news article about his achievement. Uh, this is a telegram uh, from uh, the 3rd of January 2009. Another interesting information about him is that one of his children is Dr. Proton Rahman. And you may remember him uh, as uh, the scholar, uh, the academician who is doing our province's COVID-19 mathematical modeling. And on a personal level, uh, what makes uh, Dr. Aziz Rahman uh, more special for me is uh, his, uh, you know, cheerful smiles, greetings, and uh, active volunteering uh, for his community. And that active volunteering, um, you know, went uh, on until his passing in June 2018. And uh, on a very personal note, my husband remembers seeing him at the mosque well, just one day before his passing. And he recalls him uh, doing, happily doing gardening uh, and planting colorful flowers uh, at the entrance of the mosque. So uh, trying to continue his legacy, we try to do the same, but uh, knowing how, how better he was, uh, I think we cannot um, uh, reach that standard. Uh, so whenever I see the colorful plants uh, at the entrance of our mosque, I remember of him and his legacy. Um, now I would like to talk about our archival findings, marking probably uh, the most important milestone for the Newfoundland Muslim community, and that is the building of the first mosque. Uh, Muslims here did not have a place for worship uh, for many decades. They used to pray and celebrate their religious um, uh, festivals um, in rented halls uh, in the university campus or in churches. In the 1980s, the members of Manal worked tirelessly to raise funds and getting the permits to build a mosque. And Muslim women also played an active role in this process. So in this uh, Sunday Express article dating back to 7th of March 1988, you see, um, you know, how uh, actively they were in engaged, men and women, uh, for the building of their mosque. So in this picture, you see Azizur Rahman, uh, uh, Farida Bati, and uh, Mona al -Tahan. Now, I would like to talk about our archival, uh, an archival video, uh, which we retrieved uh, from uh, Manal website. 
Uh, on September 6, 1988, the construction of Masjid al Nur, Islamic Center of Newfoundland and Labrador, began on Logi Bay Road, St. John's. Uh, so, in this brief uh, video clip, you will see uh, Abdul Salam Misbah, who was uh, Manal president back then, uh, you know, uh, marking the day uh, for, for all of us <laughs> uh, to watch and remember. Now, uh, Alhamdulillah, we're starting now the mosque being built and uh, Hopefully, inshallah, everything will go as planned, and uh, uh, we hope that, inshallah, the first stage will finish by December. And uh, if we have enough money, we will ask the contractor to continue and finish the building completely. If not, then probably we will have to accept the first stage and try to collect some more money to be able to finish it completely. Uh, right now, as uh, we see, they are starting digging, and... Uh, this is the first stage. It, uh, it looks uh, that the building will be small, but because uh, nothing is done yet, so it's just a kind of uh, feeling relative to the whole area. But uh, hopefully, inshallah, when the size of the building will be uh, sufficient for the effect of the community. Here. And if you're interested, a longer full version uh, of that video can be found on Manal website. Uh, it's a nice uh, 16 minutes long video. Uh, and we owe that video collection actually to one of the members of the Muslim community. Um, and he, he kept, uh, you know, recording, uh, you know, the construction process from the very beginning to the end. And there are smaller segments uh, in which you will find how it progressed and how uh, Muslim community, you know, uh, got excited each time they visit the construction site and so on. So, uh, as a priority, uh, when they first started the construction, uh, they uh, prioritized uh, finishing the prayer hall first uh, because um, they wanted to uh, make it available uh, to the uh, Muslim community for the upcoming uh, month of Ramadan in 1990. Uh, so, a temporary occupancy permit was obtained from the city in March 1990, uh, just before the Holy Mount of Ramadan, and the first congregational prayer was held on the night of March 15th. Uh, and later on, they continued, uh, you know, uh, finishing the other places uh, and building the library area, the social hall area, and classrooms. And again, in this uh, 1989 article, you see uh, how excited the Muslim community was with the nearing completion of their mosque. And as some of you may already know, uh, for prayer, uh, Muslims turn towards the direction of the Holy Kaaba uh, in the city of Mecca. Uh, this direction is called the Qibla, uh, and every mosque must have a clear sign of it uh, for the convenience of its congregants. Uh, and according to the records of Manal, the Qibla for Masjid al-Nur was established with the help of two unexpected visitors from another province. And I believe that question came up in your, in your quiz. I don't know how many of you guessed it right, uh, but for those who couldn't, uh, here is the story. Uh, during the construction phase, uh, a ship from St. John, New Brunswick, arrived in St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, with a Muslim chief engineer and a non-Muslim captain on board. And the two, uh, who happened to be friends, visited the mosque construction site and helped establishing the direction of the Qibla. And then, once the direction was identified, uh, they laid the carpets of the mosque uh, on the floors, and you see uh, in this archival photo from 1989. Uh, I would like to conclude by telling you uh, a very brief uh, story about a crescent. Um, and uh, it's a story to be told for generations. Uh, in 1988, Yasir al-Tahan was four years old when his parents and uh, other Muslims were working very hard uh, to finish the construction of the mosque on Logi Bay Road in St. John's. Uh, his father, Dr. Hussein al-Tahan, helped design and fabricate a crescent uh, for the mosque dome. And al-Tahan family had to briefly store this important piece at their home. And uh, uh, luckily, last year, we had the pleasure of interviewing Yas Yasir uh, for our project, and here is a brief video uh, from that interview where he talks about the Crescent story. What he did find, though, was this picture, which um, serves as a great memory, though. 
this is the minaret uh, for the mosque oh. that's on mm -hmm. top of the dome at the mosque right now. Um, or the crescent, I should say. So this, uh, my dad actually helped design, fabricate this. Um, so that was, you know, that was a big piece. This was in our, taken in our family room. So this was at our house for a period of time. And yeah, he took a picture of me. So I'm about four years old there. And uh, yeah, so that was, that's, that's my dad's contribution to the mosque. Yeah, we have so many of these videos. As uh, Jennifer mentioned earlier, we conducted interviews with 20 members of the Muslim community. Uh, most of them are seniors, but some of them are second generation uh, Muslim Canadians uh, who have been born and lived here uh, for many decades. And Yasser al Tahan was one of them. So I will pass back to Jennifer uh, to conclude the event and make probably some uh, announcements uh, to conclude the event. Thank you very much for your patience. Teşekkürler. Yes, thank you everyone. Merci, shukran. Uh, thank you for being here tonight and uh, sharing with us this uh, first, I guess, session for Canadian Islamic History Month here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So we're really excited you could be here.